hell. We've all heard of it, but what exactly is hell? Well, if you're like me, many of you probably got your first introduction to this place from somebody standing behind a pool pit shouting, saying that you ought to fear going to this place for eternity. And when you are ignorant and when you are unlearned, meaning you don't study to show thyself approved, most of the decisions that you make early on in your relationship with God can be based on this fear. But tonight, I'm going to show you exactly what hell is, and I'm going to show you why you should not fear anything but God. You shouldn't even fear going to hell. Now, I know that for most people, we have been trained to look at hell as a destination. You know, somewhere that will be for eternity once you leave this earth. So when you look at it that way, most people feel like they have a long life. They have a lot of time to make decisions, a lot of time to fail and keep trying and starting over because after all, they're waiting to die to get to this destination. And I'm going to show you tonight why that's the wrong way to look about hell. Hell is not a destination. Tonight, I'm going to show you how to look at hell as a pathway, as a road to the final destination. But to show you this, I have to show you and talk to you about the kingdom of God first. You see, similar to what I was saying about hell, the kingdom of God is also the same way. See, I thought that the kingdom of God was the same thing as heaven, and they're not. Kingdom of God is actually operating here on earth as we speak. It's actually a pathway. It's actually a road in which if you travel this road, at the end of your life, you transition to a destination called heaven. Jesus says a lot of things during his teaching, but one of his most famous sayings that he says, and a lot of people quote it every day is, I am the way, the truth, and the light. When Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the light, those are three different things wrapped up in one. But tonight, we're going to be focused on the way. A lot of people get caught up in this thing. Is Jesus the only way to make it to heaven? And that's 100% correct. The way Jesus lived, everything he stood for and represented, and everything he taught us is the way that you are going to have to travel to get to heaven. But the way Jesus lived was also representing what kingdom-minded people should look like. What the kingdom of God actually looked like operating here on earth. If you notice, he told some people that the time shall come and now there is that the kingdom of God is at hand. He was trying to get them to see that he was a reflection of how it looked for the kingdom of God to be operating here on earth. And the way I had to get this revelation is when I first started studying the Bible years ago, I asked God to give me revelation on the word. And one of the first scriptures that God ever broke down to me was Matthew 6 and 33. And I know a lot of you have read it, but for the sake of this discussion, I'm going to go through it again. And if you've got your Bibles, I encourage you to read it for yourself. Because in Matthew 6 and 33, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things that the Gentiles seek shall be added unto you. Now, at first glance, it seemed pretty self-explanatory, but God had to minister to me because the first sentence of the line had me shook because it said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And I was saying, how can I seek the kingdom of God when I'm thinking I have to wait till I pass to get to the kingdom of God, right? Because in my mind, I'm still relating the kingdom of God to heaven, but I was totally wrong. Because I was looking at the kingdom of God as a destination when I should already be seeking that here on earth. I should be seeking the peace of God. I should be seeking the spirit of God, which is the Holy Spirit, which allows me to produce the fruit of the Holy Spirit, which allows me to see the kingdom operating here on earth as it does in heaven. This is why he says, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. People who are not operating in the Holy Spirit cannot see the kingdom of God and they cannot see the kingdom operating now here on earth. Now, imagine being spiritually blind as I was. Hearing people talk about this kingdom and thinking that they're talking about something that you can't see or can't touch and you're waiting on to get to 
God to experience this, but not understanding that I could actually be experiencing this here on earth, that the kingdom of God was the pathway that I would have to travel in order to transition to the next point, which is heaven and the afterlife. Now, you may be looking at me like, that's silly, it's crazy, I don't understand. And I fully, I fully get where you're coming from because I was once there. Now, remember what I told you, when Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the light, when he says this, we're focusing on the way. So when people say, is Jesus the only way? He is the way. And this is why we're supposed to be followers of him. This is why we end our prayers with, in Jesus' name. This is why we're supposed to take the blueprint he gave us and also carry our cross as well because he told us that we would have to carry our cross. Now let's go back to the hell thing. Just like the kingdom of God is a mindset, the kingdom of God is a mindset. That's why we must take on the mindset that Christ said. He said, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. See, we have to be in this world. We have to always remember that we're not of this world. There is a spiritual side to us that's housed in this flesh that's going to spend eternity somewhere. Now, as we return back to the subject of hell, in the Bible, it talks about this place enlarging itself every day. So that's the first point that I want to stick on when I'm telling you that hell is a pathway. It's a decision. It's a choice. How can a place be enlarging itself if it's not already operating? Hell is a mind state. Hell is a choice and a decision. You hear people talk about all the time, I'm going through hell now. I'm not afraid to go to hell because I'm going through hell now. If they only knew how literal that statement really is. Because there's millions of billions of people who are actually living in torment in their spirit and go to bed every night in torment. Their soul is literally in torment as we speak. They're operating in the kingdom of hell. Okay, so they wonder why. Well, why would this God that say he loves us, how can he love us so much and he wants to send us to hell? Well, God is warning us that the judgment is what it is and he's not actually sending you to hell. You made a choice and a decision to actually live in the hell that you have experienced and created here on earth. And since God did give us free will, he does not interfere in that. And so since he doesn't interfere in that, whatever decision and choice you make, it's going to be with you for eternity. So if you've lived in hell all your life and you've had these examples and you had these chances to make a decision to live a different style of life, to go the way of Jesus, to live the style of life that Jesus lived, when you die... God is not going to interfere with the choice that you made. You're going to transition into what's called the lake of fire. Similar to if you take the pathway of the kingdom of God, you're going to transition into the destination, heaven. Does it make sense for you to live in hell all your life, to live in torment all your life, to not accept Christ, to not accept the way out of this, the escape? And when you die... Not to go to where you're most at comfort, that you're most at rest. If you go through torment your whole life, if you accept hell, if you reside in hell, when you open your life uh, eyes after death, you're going to transition into what you've already decided to create for yourself the whole time on earth. This is why it's important for believers. This is why it's imperative for believers to continue to strive for the mark of perfection, to not get weary in well-doing. To not give up. We're storing up our treasures in heaven, which is the destination when we leave. But we have to remember that the kingdom of God is operating here. This is why we pray also when Jesus taught us to pray. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Why would Jesus teach us to pray this to the Father? Unless this is the key in what we should be thinking, what we should be practicing here on earth as we prepare for our transition to heaven. So when we ask the question, why does this loving God want to send us to hell? He doesn't. He warns us, he sends prophets, he sends preachers. He, he left the word, he left Jesus. He let Jesus come as an example for us. And earlier when I said, if your introduction to this word called hell was through the pathway of fear, then you should know that that's not God's plan either. God doesn't want us to fear anything. He did not create us with the spirit of fear, but of peace and a sound mind. And I know you got a lot of these preachers who think that they're helping God by trying to make people fear God. 
That's the enemy's job. The enemy's job is to create fear in you. To make you fear this awesome and magnificent God that created you wondrously and in his image. You don't fear your parents and you're not supposed to fear your parents. If you fear your parents, there's something wrong with that relationship. When God talks about fear of the Lord, he's talking about reverence, honor, and respect. Not a trembling, scariness. I don't have to fear hell because I've made the decision to follow Christ. I don't have to fear hell because I've made a decision to be a child of God. I know what side I stand on and I don't have to fear that at all. So the decisions I make and the people I pray for and the times I study and the times I put my body under the subjection, the decisions aren't being made because I fear God. They're not being made because I'm afraid of God, but because I love God because he already loved me. There's a difference in making decisions based off fear and out of love. They're two different things. They're both powerful in their own right. But God does not want us to fear. The enemy wants us to fear. God said, I did not create you with a spirit of fear, but of peace and a sound mind. So when you make that decision to follow Christ, if you're somebody on here right now who has not made the decision, when you make that decision to follow Christ, he wants to bless you with peace and a sound mind. Don't listen to the enemy as they did in the garden. Trying to make you doubt your creator. Trying to make you doubt the father that loved you so much before you even knew him. I hope I've made this clear and I hope I bless somebody out there. Y'all be blessed.